everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hack, and in this video, we have another updated build guide for New World. This is the Hunter build, an extremely easy and powerful setup for open world combat, questing and exploration, solo leveling, and much, much more. This build uses a combination of the bow with the hatchet for some insane damage combos and mobility. And if you go far enough on this build, you can almost one-shot some enemies. This has been my main build for the launch of New World and it has been a blast so far. So let's jump right into the video. So let's start off by talking about the main attributes on the Hunter build. What do you need to make this work? Well, in terms of damage, it's actually really simple. The main weapon for this build is the bow and bow just scales with dexterity. That's the main stat for bow builds. So in terms of where you wanna put your attribute points, what kind of gear sets do you want to look for? Your main stat, definitely dex. That's going to make your bow abilities hit as hard as possible. We also get some great passives for investing in dexterity. Things like bonus critical hit chance, bonus thrust damage and headshot damage. You definitely will want to max out this stat. Now the other thing I always recommend, and especially for new players, is you want some points into constitution. And what does constitution do? It basically is your health pool. The more constitution you have, the more you have max health. Now, early on, I actually put a little bit more points into Constitution, and that's because I want a specific passive. 50 Con, you get the Health Consumables passive. This makes all of your health potions do 20% more healing. This is essential on this build, in my opinion, and in most builds in New World, we don't have a ton of self-healing, so having those really strong potions for a possible burst heal for emergencies, that's what you want. So again, try to hit that 50 Constitution mark as early as possible, and then after that, everything into Dexterity. Now, yes, our other weapon, the hatchet, does scale better with strength. So some strength on this build, especially on your gear pieces, is not bad. But keep in mind, this is a long range build. First and foremost, we won't be using the hatchet much at all. And so putting your points into dexterity first will really give you the biggest advantage. So as far as consumables go on this build, it's actually really simple. You'll want your basic buff food, light rations, for example. This recovers your health. 1% of your max health every two and a half seconds for 20 minutes. You want this basically just for the passive healing in between fights to keep your health topped off. Now you can consume one of these during combat as well. That's gonna give you even more of a health boost for about 20 seconds as long as you're not taking damage. So it's almost like a mini heal over time effect. Now there are other buff foods you can get later on in the game through crafting. You can cook attribute food, which can increase like your dexterity or your strength and constitution, for example. So that's something you might want to look into later on. Now, as far as potions, the main type of potion we want, obviously, is the health potion. And you'll start with the weak health potions. Super easy to craft these yourself. You just need water and herbs. Would recommend upgrading those eventually to the common health potions. These can give you a lot more healing. And when you combine that with the passive stat that we talked about in constitution, the 20% bonus healing, these end up being really good. Finally, unlike a pure melee build or a magic caster, the hunter build does rely on arrows. So that's gonna be your main consumable that you're gonna have to make sure that you have all the time. If you don't have arrows, you can't use your bow abilities anymore. You can start with the flint arrows at first, those are totally fine. And eventually you can upgrade those to better types of arrows like iron, for example, for even more damage. Now, speaking of arrows, you will need to be comfortable crafting arrows in New World pretty much to make this build work. That's what I would recommend. Yes, you can buy them, but I would recommend crafting them yourself. So the flint arrow that we talked about is the easiest. You just need flint, green wood, feathers. Really easy to get all those materials at the beginning of the game. Feathers is probably the hardest part, uh, but you've got basically the best weapon in the game to kill turkeys, which is the bow. And again, once you're ready to upgrade iron arrows, you'll need the ingots, timber, and feathers again. And you can do this later. You don't have to do it right away. There's not a huge difference. So to craft either version of the arrow, you need to do this at a workshop in the settlement. The great thing about this though, is you don't need any engineering skill. You can just do this right at the beginning of the game. Zero engineering, get your materials and craft your arrows. All right, let's talk about the equipment next. Weapons and armor, what's gonna be best for this setup? Well, in my opinion, you will want to focus on light armor and have a light equip load. Now, if you are brand new to the game, how does equip loads work? Basically, there's three categories that your build 
can fit into. You're either a light build, medium, or heavy, and there's different bonuses and drawbacks for that. Now, why is light going to be best for the hunter build? Well, you get the most damage. You deal 20% bonus damage. You also get bonus healing, and you also get the roll dodge. So that is the best form of dodge in the game. Now, the downside, of course, would be you don't have that much armor. You have very low physical and elemental resistance, which means when you get hit, it is going to hurt. But I don't really see that as a problem on this build. It's primarily a long range to medium range setup. And if you play it correctly, you're not going to be getting hit very often at all. Plus, you do have the dodge roll to help you get out of those situations. So yeah, light armor, you get all that extra bonus damage, which is huge, especially if you're trying to level up quickly. Uh, solo, you want to do as much damage as possible. So this is really good. Now, the ideal way to run light armor is to use all pieces of light, except for one medium. And you want your medium to be the chest piece. And that's going to give you the most physical and elemental armor rating as possible. So that's what I would recommend. Look for a medium chest and then everything else is light. Main stats you want, obviously dexterity. That's gonna scale your bow skills the best. So I actually picked up this Windsward Scout long coat. This is from a quest line uh, in the settlement of Windsward. It gives 12 dexterity, free gem slot, pretty good piece of equipment. Another set you can be on the lookout for is called the Ranger. Uh, this gives you the bonus dexterity as well. There's a set called Warden. This gives you dexterity and constitution. That's pretty good as well. Here's another one. Cavalier gives you both strength and dexterity. Remember, strength is the primary scaling stat for hatchet skills. So those will help those abilities hit a little bit harder as well. Jewelry, I got a couple basic things I was able to find on traders this week. Dexterity and constitution necklace. Windsward Loop, I believe that's from another quest line in Windsward. Strength and Dexterity is pretty good for this build as well. It also reduces your cooldowns. Now, in terms of weapons for the Hatchet, again, Strength, Dexterity, those are going to be your main stats that you want to look for. This one I did find with the Rogue trait, which is pretty good. 11% more backstab damage. You might want to look for this. Basically, if you can dodge roll behind an enemy, you can then uh, hit them with your Hatchet for bonus backstab damage. That's actually pretty good. Then let's talk about the bow. So the bow is the most important thing you're going to want to think about as far as traits, gems, attributes. Now, I didn't get the best stats on this. You can see this has strength and focus. Focus does nothing for me, but I really do like the trait on this. Enchanted boosts your light and heavy attack damage. And we'll see this in the skills in just a minute as well. Bow does a ton of heavy attack damage. So if you can buff that in any way, like with this enchanted trait, that's going to stack with all of the extra damage you already have, and it's going to be really, really strong. Here's another bow I picked up. I'm not using this because I don't like the stats on it, but I do really like the trait. So you want to look out for this one too. Vorpal increases your headshot damage. So really good for bow builds as well. You can see this one even has an open gem slot. And speaking of gems, what should you be looking out for once you get to the point where your bow does actually have an open slot? Well... The Onyx is really good, you guys. Look at this trait. Brash gives you 15% bonus damage against targets with full health. So we have other buffs to like our heavy attack against targets with full health. This is going to be even more damage stacked on top of that. So yeah, a bow with the Onyx gem is going to be very strong for this build. All right, moving right along to our skills, starting with the bow. Where do you want to put your points? Well, it just makes sense for this build since it is the hunter uh, that we're going to use the hunter skill tree. And so I would recommend you start here with penetrating shot. It deals a lot of damage and it can also pass through multiple targets. So if you can line up your enemies in a way where this can just slice right through them, it's a really good opportunity to do some additional damage. From there, I would recommend getting Rapid Shot as your second ability. This fires off three consecutive arrows. The last shot is going to deal more damage and a knockback. These can be a little tricky to land if your target is moving, so you'll need to practice with this. And then the final bow ability I would recommend is actually over here, Evade Shot from the Skirmisher skill tree. This is more about maneuverability and avoiding damage. So when you fire this, you leap back five meters and you shoot an arrow dealing 125% weapon damage. Now the real power of this weapon really doesn't start to come in until around like weapon level seven, eight and above when you start to unlock a lot of these passives. 
So starting here with Aim True, heavy attacks fly faster and deal 30% more damage. So basically when you pull back on your bowstring, you'll hold it for long enough, that's gonna change your basic light attack into a heavy attack. If you do that, you get 30% bonus damage with this passive, that's a lot of damage. We also have long range, deals 20% more damage to foes at least 10 meters away. And 10 meters is honestly not that far. You should be at least 10 meters away when you initiate a target on this build. We also have finishing shot. If your target is below 50% health, you deal 20% more damage. Opening strike, heavy attacks deal plus 20% damage to foes with 100% health. So that combined with the aim true passive, that's why you always wanna lead off on this build with a heavy attack for some big time damage. Uh, down here, I also picked up Surprise Attack, so if you haven't damaged a foe in the last 10 seconds, that's another bonus 20% damage. And then Hawkeye, this gives you a little bit of a heal uh, whenever you land a headshot on targets. Eventually, I will be adding the upgrades for Rapid Shot. These are pretty good, so Rapid Accuracy reduces the cooldown on that skill, and then Final Blow deals an extra 25% damage. And of course, the final skill here, Concussion, when you land a headshot, you deal 20% more damage and a 50% chance to get your arrow back. Now, once you get the Hunter tree filled out most of the way, I think you can actually come back to Skirmisher and get a few other really solid passives. For example, Evasive Tactics, after you dodge, you deal 20% more damage for five seconds. You will be dodging quite a bit on this build, especially with multiple enemies. So this could be quite good as well. Catch Me If You Can gives you haste when you're surrounded by three or more enemies. And then I really like this one, Impale. If you hit a foe with 100% health, you cause 10% slow for two seconds. So that kind of goes with our uh, premise of the build, which is that big heavy attack on a full health target. Other than that, I would say maybe Evade Shot could be swapped out for group situations like Expeditions, where you might want some more AOE-focused damage. In that case, you could go with a skill like Reign of Arrows. This does some solid damage. It also has some good upgrades too with damage over time and additional slowing effects. And then there's also Poison Shot. So this also does AOE uh, damage over time. So if you're really into group content, specifically Expeditions, I would definitely check out one of those two options. So quick demo on the bow skills. Let's see how they work in action. Now, first of all, if an enemy is closing in on you, that's when you want to use your dodge roll and evade shot. You can see I can get lots of distance before the enemy can even touch me. So that is a great defensive maneuver. Now, if we're going to engage with a target, that's where you want to do your full heavy attack on the bow. Pull it all the way back, then follow that up with penetrating shot and then right into rapid shot. That's a huge burst combo that most enemies cannot survive. And again, just to show you the power of that heavy attack on the bow, make sure you're trying to get the headshot for the bonus damage and the healing. One or two heavy attacks should be enough to get most enemies down as well. All right, so that's gonna bring us to our backup weapon, which will be the hatchet. And you can see we're focused 100% into the berserker tree here to start with. First nine weapon points so far, I would definitely start with berserk. This gives you 20% bonus damage while active. And then we would pick up Feral Rush next. This is a really nice medium range attack, almost like a gap closer. And if you actually have a target in your crosshairs, it actually pulls you in a little bit closer. So it's really good. I like to mix this in with Evade Shot actually from the bow skill line. And then uh, final ability here, Raging Torrent, performs four fast attacks, each dealing 90% weapon damage. Once you pick up all three skills, go back into Berserk and start picking up these upgrades, which are so good. On the Hunt increases your movement speed while in Berserk. Berserking Refresh gives you a heal for 30% of your max HP. Berserking Purge removes all crowd control effects, including slows, stuns, and roots. And eventually we will want Uninterruptible Berserk, which means you can't be staggered. As far as passives, you can go with Enraged Strikes. This buffs your light and heavy attacks if your target is below 30% health, as well as Accumulated Power. This will give you that Empower buff, which is a 30% increased damage. Against all odds will also increase your base damage by 10% for every enemy within five meters. Now, this is good because we tend to whip out the hatchet when we have multiple enemies that we're facing off against. And then finally, you will want Defy Death here at the end of the skill tree when you receive lethal damage. You avoid death, reduce to 50 HP, and gain immortality for three seconds. Really strong ability. 
Quick demo here on the hatchet skills. Remember first you can use Feral Rush as a gap closer to get into combat, it's really effective. From there, Raging Torrent is your main damaging ability, but usually you'll want to pop Berserk before that. Remember that Berserk will buff all of your hatchet attacks by 20%. And really, hatchet is going to be used when you have more than a single target. When you're getting rushed by multiple enemies, this is where the hatchet really shines. So again, pop Berserk first for that bonus damage and healing. Use Raging Torrent to damage all enemies in front of you. And then Feral Rush if you need to close the distance to get into combat faster or to target a different enemy. All right, everybody. And with all that said, that's going to wrap up our build video for the Hunter bow slash hatchet build for New World. Now I am still playing this build right now. I will be updating it over time. If you want to see those updates, or if you just want more information about the skills, the passives, the gear, we do have a full written guide over on our website, rpgdojo.com. We've got everything there listed out for you. Super easy to follow. We also have much more New World content over on that site. We have beginner to advanced guides and even more builds for you guys to check out. If you're interested in any of that, definitely take a look. There'll be a link down in the description and the pinned comment. And last but not least, if you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to crush that like button. We are a brand new channel on YouTube, so every like, every subscribe, every comment really helps us out. And I definitely appreciate it. As always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you around in the next video.